Hello, beautiful people. It is Ui Tepo here. I pray that we are well. I pray that we are blessed. Today, what I want to do with us is share a word of encouragement. And I believe that this word is here to remind us that we serve a God that can do the impossible. We serve a God that can make the impossible possible in the mighty name of Jesus. And I believe that someone needs to be reminded of this. I believe that many of us are in situations that simply look impossible. If you remember last year, a word that I released is that a lot of us are not just looking for a breakthrough. We are hoping for a miracle. And I feel like that is still the, the case for so many people, right? You're, you're in fact looking at other people and you've noticed that they've received their breakthrough. They've received their miracle and you're asking the lord lord why does mine seem so impossible the lord wants to remind you that he is a god that works in the realm of the impossible he is the god that makes the impossible possible in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah so your situation only looks impossible to you it does not look impossible to god take time to meditate on all the times in the word that the lord turned an impossible situation into a possible situation if you can even meditate on moments in your own life where the lord has proven himself faithful and showed you that what seemed impossible to you is in fact nothing to him i believe that it's in moments of impossibility that the lord expects us to rest and that's the that's the interesting thing about these moments the enemy will make you want to work harder but the lord calls you to rest in moments of impossibility because this is when his hand will move on your behalf i want to urge you to rejoice in this moment as difficult as it might be Rejoice in this moment. Rejoice in knowing the ability and the power that your God has in turning your situation around. We know that he is the type of God that brings children into the wombs of barren old women. That is hectic, guys. I want you to take time to consider the power that this God has, right? He is the type of God that can place a child in a young virgin girl's body imagine that and give her the grace to carry this child that is how powerful he is he's the type of god that actually brings water into deserts i was thinking about the story in genesis when hagar and her son ishmael are sent out and the word speaks of how when they were at their last strength right when there was absolutely nothing that they could do and their death seemed imminent the word says that Hagar placed her son under the tree and she went away from him so that she wouldn't even see him die, right? And she began to weep and the child began to weep. And then the Lord appeared to her. In fact, an angel of the Lord appeared. And in that interaction that the angel had, after encouraging her, he brought them water, right? The word says that she saw in the distance that there was in fact a well. That reminded me of the word we released in Isaiah 35, and I'll put it up here, where the Lord says that he will turn the mirages, the burning sand into pools of fresh water in jesus mighty name so a lot of you might feel like hagar in this very moment that you are in it seems so impossible i might die right the idea as we said of being in a desert is such an impossible situation where will i find water in a desert my death seems more possible than the lord bringing fresh springs of water for me to drink for me to be refreshed and for me to regain strength but the lord is saying that is exactly what he will do your mirages will turn into pools of fresh water the visions and the things that seem like illusions will turn out to be real because he's a faithful god he makes what seems impossible to you possible in the word i released about healing i spoke about how the lord healed me of an impossible situation i have heard testimonies about the lord healing people from impossible situations he is that type of god that is the type of God we serve, and he can do the very same thing for you. I believe that he's done it before. May we hold on to his faithfulness and his track record, right? May we consider him and judge him faithful, just like Sarah did in Hebrews 11. Once you remember what your God is capable of, I also want you to speak to that impossible situation. Tell that impossible situation that from now on, you are insignificant in Jesus' mighty name. In fact, I want to read Zechariah, Zechariah 4 verse 6 to 7. I remember just yesterday, I woke up 
with the scripture in my heart. And I knew the Lord was confirming this word that he's been speaking to me about, that he will do the impossible, but it will not be by our might. It will not be by our strength. It will be by his spirit. And that is why I believe the Lord is calling you not only to be encouraged, not only to be restored in this season, but also in Jesus' mighty name to rest to rest. So we know that in the book of Zechariah, he receives a vision where he sees two olive trees supplying oil to seven lamps, right? And as he sees this vision, his response to the angel is, what is this? What are you showing me? And this is what the angel says to Zechariah. This is verse seven, verse six to seven. The angel said, this continuous supply of oil is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. In fact, it says, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain of obstacles before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain. You will become insignificant. And he will bring out the capstone of the new temple with loud shouts of grace grace to it in Jesus mighty name. May you be, may you take the words of this angel seriously. May you look at your mountain and say, who are you to even defy my God that can make you plain and insignificant? You must be ashamed that you think you can stand against me, a child of the most high God. May you have audacity in this season. I mean, there are things that we need to be praying for guys with a little bit more audacity, a little bit more confidence, understanding not only the authority that Jesus has given you through his name, but even the authority you have simply because you are his son, simply because you are his daughter. So I want you to know that it will not be by your individual power, nor will it even be by your collective power. Someone needs to know that it won't be by your cleverness. It won't be by your goodness. A lot of us think that we can twist the arm of God. The Lord says, no, if I've spoken something in your life, if I've promised you this very thing, I will do it. I will establish it. I will determine it. I will even bring it to pass at my, at my appointed time. And I will bring it to pass very quickly because I am the Lord and I am faithful. I do not need you to give me the go ahead, says the Lord. He will do it at his appointed time. You just believe that he is the type of God that can make the impossible possible. It actually takes audacity to believe in what God said he will do in your life. It actually takes audacity. When you think about it, there's an element of faith that requires your audacity. There's an element of faith that requires you to say, I don't care what you say. I don't care what they say. I care what God says. And if God said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. It's as simple as that. So as I said, I believe the Lord is bringing your breakthrough. He is turning that impossible situation around for you. And the Lord says he is not doing it for your sake, but he's doing it for his name's sake, right? his namesake. If the Lord does not do what he said he will do, then his word would fall apart. It would mean that he's a liar and we know that he is not. We know that his nature is to be faithful and true to his word. So Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12 reads, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? Hallelujah. And Jeremiah said, I see the branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. So this is what is so amazing, guys. The Lord led me to the scripture a few days ago. Now, this is what's so amazing about the almond tree, right? The almond tree is known as the awake tree because it was the first tree to bud in the new year around late January. It was the symbol of watchfulness. I want you guys to take note of that. It is known as the awake tree and it is known to first bud in the new year around late January. So firstly, what the Lord is telling us is that we serve a watchful God. We serve a God that is attentively watching over the word he's released over your life to make sure that it is fulfilled to make sure that he performs it. I also love how this very scripture is in fact speaking about the very season we are in. When I received this word guys it was in fact like the 31st of January and the Lord led me to Jeremiah 1. So I love how this is the very season that the Lord is speaking about right? This is the season we are in right now and research will tell you that the almond tree starts to bud 
around late January and then harvest occurs between February and April. Now this is what is so powerful about this word. At the end of last year, around November, I believe, the Lord spoke to us about how he is crowning the first quarter of 2024 with goodness and bounty. I love that so much because now he's confirming to us, right, that it is our time of harvest. In the February prophetic word, we spoke about how it is a new season. We have entered a new season where a lot of shedding and discipline and pruning needs to take place because there is a great miracle and breakthrough that will come after this season of discipline, right? The Lord says that he only reproves those he loves in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is what I love so much, guys. We are in our season of harvest. And the Lord says not only is the word budding, but we are in a season of harvest because it is the time between February and April where the harvest, in fact, begins. This is when the almond tree has reached its most favorable condition. In fact, it says this is when the almond is at its most acceptable moisture level. Hallelujah. So this is the most acceptable time for you to receive your harvest. This is the most acceptable time for the Lord to watch over your word and ensure that he performs it. So this is the Lord reminding us, guys, that he is faithful, that we are called to rest in this time. Yes, he may call you to partner with him, but he's calling you to rest and to know and trust in his faithfulness in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord will surely, surely fill up the quarter, the first quarter of 2024 with so much bounty, so much goodness. I mean, there's so much that we are celebrating already in our personal, personal lives. And I pray that it's the same thing for you. God bless you guys. And I pray that you receive this and take it to the Lord. Be blessed. Bye-bye.